Good morning. The most cordial welcome before we begin Mass. I'd just like to have this opportunity before we begin just to welcome all of you and thank you so very much for being here this morning to share in the great joy of our children to rejoice not only in your family life but also the family life of the church and the family life of our parish as 15 of our children will receive for the very first time our Lord in Holy Communion. So we welcome our families and our guests and our visitors on this very, very special day. Just a few little directions before we begin Mass. You're most welcome to take pictures as the children enter the church and leave the church. However, we do ask you please, for the sake of the sanctity of the Mass, not to take flash pictures during the Mass. As your children receive Holy Communion, we have a professional photographer who will be up front here who will take a picture of your child at that moment when they receive the Lord. And therefore, that will be our gift to you and to your family from the parish. After Mass, you're most welcome to take pictures anywhere on the church property, including here back in church. We just ask you, if you do come back to church, to, to keep a, a decorum of, of the sanctity of the area. And also, uh, at the end of the Mass, the children will go to the side aisles and the rest of you, I invite you to go outside because on the steps of the church, we will have a class picture. And all of you, please, you can take pictures after the professional photographer takes his picture. The other thing is, after the children receive Holy Communion, they will come and go to the side of the pew. And then as, after they have received, then you all, I invite you to come receive, and then the children will move down. So don't have them climb over you. They know what they're doing. At least I hope so. So we'll do that. And then finally, after Mass, the class will be, uh, picture will be taken. So I invite you now to have a spirit of, of silence for a little bit as we recollect uh, the great gift that the children will receive today as the gift of Holy Communion. So again, welcome. It's wonderful to see so many of you. There are extra rooms in the back of the church in the choir loft, so if you're really packed in that pew, if you want to spread out a little bit and breathe, um, you're invited to move around the church a little bit.
mind singing the entrance hymn found in the printed program, O Bread of Heaven. accomplished the work of human redemption through the paschal mystery of your only begotten Son, graciously grant that we, who confidently proclaim under sacramental signs the death and resurrection of Christ, may experience continued increase of your saving grace through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Can you be seated now as we will listen to God's word? A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles and the, to the communal life, to the breaking of the bread and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their properties and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day, they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exultation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, hi. 
letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. For I have received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup, after supper, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to John. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. But this is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. And the Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, 
Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. And just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. For this is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Have we waited for this day, huh? I know you've waited for this day, and your moms and dads and your family, they've waited for this day. And Mr. and Mrs. Richardson, your teachers, they've been waiting for this day. And Mrs. Latuka, she's been really waiting for this day. I've been waiting for this day. But there's someone else who's been waiting for this day, too. Who do you think else has been waiting for this day? You know? Jesus, God, very good. Jesus has been waiting for the past seven or eight years for this day. And he knew this day was going to happen. May 6, 2023 is a historical day. Not because of the Kentucky Derby this afternoon. And not because there was a new king in England today. But because of you. Because today our Lord is going to come to you for the first time in a most special way. How is he going to come to you? going to come to you as food. Food. And not just any old food, but a special type of food. How is Jesus going to come to you as food today? What is he going to come to you as? Bread. Good. Bread. Everybody loves bread, right? Some people love bread a little bit more than others, but we all love bread. Now, why bread? Because bread is the most basic food there is. We eat bread three times a day. We have bread in the morning as toast. We have bread in the afternoon as sandwiches at lunch. And we even have bread at dinner, the dinner rolls and dinner food, right? So bread is something very, very important for us. And every culture, every nation, every people has their own sort of bread, right? So for example, the Italians, they have garlic bread. The French, they have the baguettes. The Irish, what type of bread do they have? Soda bread, brown bread, right? The Greeks, they have pita bread. The Spanish, they have the sweet breads, right? Everybody has bread. The Germans have a pumpernickel. Any Jewish kids here? <laughs> rye bread, right? We have rye bread. Everybody has bread. So bread is so very, very important for us. And Jesus comes to us as bread. But he comes to us as a special type of bread, as we heard in the gospel. It's a living bread. Now, the bread that we eat, be it Tasty Cake or Wonder Bread or Italian bread, that's not alive. It once was, but not anymore. But the bread that we're going to have today, boys and girls, is living bread. It helps us to live. It sustains us. It gives us the strength to live the life that God wants us to live. And he gives us nourishment. And just like if you didn't eat, you wouldn't last too long here on earth, well, today, you're going to be the first time Jesus is going to come to you in a special way. And that's why everybody loves your First Communion Day. Now, how many of you remember the first time you ever ate pizza? Do you remember that day? No. And if you did, I'm quite sure your mom and dad said, Hey, listen, Sebastian's going to have his first slice of pizza today. So I want you to get all dressed up and come over to the house for a party. Did they do that? No. Or maybe the first time you had McDonald's. All right, now you're going to go to McDonald's for the first time today and see Ronald McDonald. I want you to get all dressed up in a pretty dress and a nice blue suit. Did they do that? No. But here you are today, boys and girls, handsome and pretty in your nice suits and your white dresses. Why? Because you're always going to remember today. You're always going to remember your first Holy Communion Day because it's the day that you receive Jesus for the first time. And he comes into you because he loves you. He wants to be a part of you. Now, when you were born, 
I'm quite sure when your grandmother saw you the first time, she said, oh, what a cute little person this is. You take on my side of the family. And then they probably said, you're so cute, I love you so much, I could eat you right up, right? Because they want to be a part of you. That's what love is. Love is wants to be a part of you. And so Jesus loves you so much, boys and girls, he wants to be a part of you. And today he comes into you in a very special way, it's living bread. And now, when we eat bread, bread becomes part of us. Well, not today. You become part of Jesus. And that's why everybody remembers their first communion day. I remember my first communion day. It was April 29th, 1967, 56 years ago. I was two years old at the time, by the way. But anyway, now you boys, you have it easy. You have blue suits. When I received my first Holy Communion, I had to wear white suits. Everything was white. White pants, white shirt, white jacket, white socks, white tie, white armband, and a terrible thing they used to put on our feet called white bucks. Heavy, heavy shoes. And there's only one store you could buy them at, Buster Brown's. And you had to buy those shoes. And you had to wear everything was white. And I remember I have two older brothers and younger sister, and they all got dressed first. I was the last one to get dressed. And after I got dressed, my mother said, stand there and don't move. <laughs> and then we all went to church. And we went upstairs in the auditorium. There was our teacher, Sister Margaret Mary. And she had all those all lined up. And she said, boys, you're so nice and calm. Don't even breathe. Till you get to church. And there I was, like you, excited. Family was around us. It was a wonderful, beautiful day. And boys and girls, you're always going to remember today, too. Why? Because Jesus comes to you in the most beautiful gift. Now, your moms and dads gave you a very beautiful gift seven, eight years ago when they brought you to church and had you baptized. That's when God came in and lived in you. And now today, the very next step you're taking is when you receive our Lord for the very first time. Beautiful day. For your families, for us here at St. Margaret's, for all of us around now tomorrow, when you come to receive your second communion, and each time you receive communion, it becomes a little sweeter, by the way. I want you to come dressed as best as you can as you are today, because I want the rest of the parish to see you, because for the past year, everybody's been praying for you, and they've been waiting for this day, like the rest of us. And so when you come to Mass tomorrow, when you receive Jesus for the second time, come dressed up so everybody can see you and congratulate you and thank you because you inspire us. You help us to become holier people when we receive and see you receive Holy Communion. So boys and girls, always be thankful for today. Always remember today's day, May 6th, because it's the day that God comes to you in the most special way, as heavenly, wonderful food. That always, you can always have, no matter how old you get, you can always have that food that comes into your heart, and into your soul, and gives you the strength to live a good life a happy life, a life that God wants you to live. And so now let us stand to the Lord and ask him to hear our prayers of petition. For as we worship the living God, let us lift our voices in prayer through Christ the High Priest, and mediator of the new covenant. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For Holy Mother Church, that she perseveres in feeding us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parents, godparents, relatives, and friends, that they be examples to inspire and accompany all children on their journey of faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the children who for the first time will receive the Lord Jesus in the Eucharist, may they grow to be ever more like him in faith, hope, and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here, may each and every one of us grow in appreciation and gratitude for the privilege of sharing in the banquet of Christ's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Ukrainian people in this time of conflict, may God's grace sustain and strengthen them and keep them from harm. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for all our dearly departed, that the light of Christ's resurrection may shine on them for all eternity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Behold, O God, your people, here around your altar, to offer you the sacrifice of a new and everlasting covenant. Help us to worship you, that at the supper of the Lamb we may delight in the foretaste of the Paschal Feast of Heaven. Hear the prayers of our children, who will receive for the first time the bread of life. Keep them and their families always united in your love, as we ask all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The offertory hymn is See Us, Lord, About Your Altar, found in the program. Celebrating the memorial of our salvation, we humbly beseech your mercy, O Lord, that this sacrament of your loving kindness may be for us the sign of unity and the bond of charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Yes. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the last supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race founded by one world may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so as we approach this table of your wondrous sacrament, so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the hosts of the angels, cry out, and without end, we acclaim. <laughs>
therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the do fall, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and so entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The history of faith. We proclaim what hath all Lord and profess your resurrection until you will come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Timothy our Bishop, and all the clergy. And remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your presence. Have mercy on them. We pray with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Margaret, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. So now we stand together as the family of God to pray the prayer that Jesus our brother taught us as we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. O oh Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Uh. 
takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
communion hymn can be found in the program, Hymn, Soul of My Savior. <laughs> sharing at the heavenly table, sanctify us, O Lord, we pray, that through the body and blood of Christ, the whole family of believers may be bound together through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If you kindly be seated just for a moment. Before we all go our separate ways and continue on in a beautiful, wonderful celebration of today's, I'd just like to thank a group of people who really made this day so very much possible. And the first group of people I want to thank is a very special group of people. That's our grandparents. So all the grandparents, if you please stand. All our grandparents. There you go. Thank you very much. Thank you for your family life and your family love. And if it wasn't for you, we would be here today. So what joy must be for you, and we thank you so very much for all that you do for our family here and, and all the great example of love and, and faith that you give to all of us. We thank you. Of course, moms and dads, I want to thank you, because if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be here either. So thank you, moms and dads. When you brought your beautiful gift of your child to church on the day of their baptism, you promised before God that you will raise them up according to the faith of the church. And this is a wonderful step in your own life of faith as well. So I want to thank you for your inspiration and your hope and your sacrifices to bring our children to school, to bring them to learn about the beautiful joy of, of knowing God. So parents, thank you and for your love of one another and bringing these beautiful children into the world. I thank you as well. And of course, all our relatives and friends, thank you for being here with us today to make this mess so very special. I'd like to thank most particularly Mrs. Latuka, who's our director of our religious education program. Thank you, Mrs. Latuka, for you and all that you do. Thank you. We are really, really blessed in our parish to have Mrs. Latuka here, all these moments of a great, great joy, and she, what wonderful work she does for all of us. So God has really blessed our parish with, with her presence. I want to thank your teachers, Mr. and Mrs. Richardson, for all that you do and all that you've done. Thank you so much. And I know on our altar we have someone very special, and that's, of course, the statue of our Blessed Lady, 
who I know went, went to many of your homes. So she was here with us today. So when you, you received our Lord for the first time, she was there as well. And of course, to my young people, I want to thank you. Because I want you also to do me a favor today. At the end of today, when you take off all those beautiful suits and dresses and you hang them up, and after you open up all those envelopes and count all those thousands of dollars that you're going to get, <laughs> and open up all your presents, I want you to kneel down next to your bed tonight. And I want to thank you and I say thank you to Jesus. And I want you to thank God for the beautiful gift of today. The first time you received our Lord in Holy Communion. It wasn't just a piece of bread. It wasn't a symbol. It was God. And that's the great gift that God has given us. When our Lord at the Last Supper, before he died, he wanted to be more part of us. He just didn't want to be a memory or a picture or a movie. He really wanted to be a part of who we were. And so he took that piece of bread and said, this is me. And he gave it to us. And for all these thousands of years, we Catholics have come together to receive the Lord. And today, boys and girls, was your first day. And I want you to thank God for the beautiful gift that you received today. And thank God for the gift of your moms and dads. And your grandparents and your family, even your brothers and sisters. Thank them, God for them too. And thank all the people that brought you to this day. Now in your bags, we all of you have a little bag, you have a certificate that states that this day took place, so you hold on to that. And also is the statue of our Blessed Lady, right? It so it reminds you of the great love that Mary has for you. And then you also have a candle. Now the candle is a very special candle. And that candle is to remind you of today. Because see that big old candle, that Easter candle? That's the symbol of Christ, the light. And when you were baptized, you were given a candle. And many of you I know went home to find that candle. Today, you received another sacrament, so you're receiving your first Holy Communion candle. And about seven years from now, when you receive confirmation, you will receive another candle. And girls, in about 30 years when you get married, you're going to get a candle for your wedding day. And when all you boys become priests, you're going to get a candle too. <laughs> and so we congratulate you and we thank you so very much for being a part of our family. Just a last reminder, after Mass, after the blessing, the children will go to the side aisles, and the rest of you, take this in the right way, get out of here. Go down to the, the plaza, where the children will come out. After you all exited the church, you'll have our class, uh, our class picture, and then off you go to celebrate with your family and friends. What a joyful, beautiful day God has given to all of us, and so all of us, before the day ends, just thank God for the beautiful gift that he has given to all of us. Please stand now for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing the Marian Antiphon for Easter, the Regina Chaley. Amen.